Greetings and salutations! Welcome to DFI for the wrap-up video to Infusion Cat Challenge number 5. Congratulations to everyone on screen who submitted in a successful entrant for the Cat Challenge. These guys got it right. Uh, and if you think to yourself, whoa, mate, hang on, what's going on? I sent you an email and I'm pretty sure, in fact, I'm dead certain that I got it right and my name is not on the list. Right, I'm going to have to just hold the phone here, mate, for a minute and give an explanation because I'm going to be, I'm going to receive a bit of criticism here from people. I'm going to annoy and upset some people here, but these are the rules, right? Uh, as much as I really do appreciate, and genuinely, I'm not just saying this is fluff, but I really do appreciate everybody uh, having to go with the car challenge and getting involved. Uh, I appreciate everyone's time, uh, although it's, it's kind of for, it's kind of for your benefit as well. You know, I, I don't get much out of this. This is for everyone else's benefit more than mine. But um, I appreciate everyone having a go. But the rules were pretty clear in the first video. In order to enter the competition, zip up your finished assemblies and parts, and then email them over to tfi at tficad.tips. Those were the rules, and the guys listed at the start of the video did just that. Uh, however, a couple of dozen people uh, did not do that, and instead they hosted their files on their own cloud sharing sites, and then sent me a, a shared folder in a hyperlink in an email. And that means I have to go and then download their files. I have to click a link in an email and go download the file. Mate, I can't do that. For reasons that I kind of hope would be obvious, I can't go clicking links and emails from people I don't know. All it takes is one person who really doesn't like me or someone who just likes to just likes to mess with people. And that's it, I'm kaput. You know, it could be a, a, an email link disguised as all kinds of nasty stuff, ransomware, viruses, malware, Trojans, whatever. And that's it, I'm all, it's, it's all and done with. So I can't do that. And honestly, uh, I'm not going to repeat and reiterate the, the rules that I've already given out by emailing back everybody uh, to, to tell them to send emails back in. I can't, I'm not going to do that. I've already given the rules out. So unfortunately, if you uh, if you sent me an email with a hyperlink and I did already give the rules out, that's it. That's how it is. So uh, and don't feel the need to um, get in touch with me through any methods you can possibly find to explain yourself. It, it's okay. I've moved on to other things now. I'm working on other stuff. I'm past it. I'm over it. Uh, it's just don't, please don't feel the need to do that. Uh, the rules were the rules. They were defined very clearly. It's been the same through all the Invasion card challenges. It's set up specifically so that everything can be done through email, sending files through email. So with that being said, mate, let's just get on with it. Let's get through and show you how the challenge was indeed done. All right then, lad, let's take a look at how it was done and open up the infusion, the, the, the not sample files, my files. And uh, yeah, it's been six weeks since I looked at these. I'm not going to lie. I'm looking at these going, how did I do this? <laughs> yeah, I've looked at them in six weeks. You kind of forget how to do it. Uh, but this is all about dynamic simulation, mate. The whole point of infusion challenge number five, Helter Skelter, is purely to get people into dynamic simulation, to make them aware of it, if they didn't know it already existed, and to then experiment with it and play with it and to just raise awareness of it. Because it's a very underutilized area of Autodesk Inventor is dynamic simulation. So it's just to raise awareness of it and then uh, just get people just investigating it, really, just poking around at it. So we've got the, the cup and the marble and then the Helter Skelter and then the ground is like a, a tray, really. To get things set up, uh, what you, what you got to do is move the marble up to the start point and then move the cup in place. So the way I did this was go to my grip snap and then pick up the marble and then select the center point of the ball using the center origin and then drag him up to the little work point which was pre-created as the start point for the marble and then we'll okay on that. All right, and then we've got to move the cup in place. So you could you could constrain them in production. You probably would constrain these parts in place, but I'm just grip snapping it for now for for time ease of time. So we're going to go to grip snap, and then pick up the bottom of the cup. So just select other, and then go for that face there. Drag along normal, look straight down, and then we'll drag the cup. So this is currently sliding along because we did drag planar. It's sliding along the top of the of the surface of the the, the ground. So it's not like going up and down in space. We'll drag the cup to about, I don't know, about here. It's sort of roughly in line with where the ball would fall off the Helter Skelter. So about here, I think. Right click and OK on that. And I think that looks good to me. That does look good to me. Uh, it might be a little bit too far forward, but we can adjust it later. And then we'll jump into Dynamic Sim, mate. Uh, <laughs> this is where things start getting interesting. So, uh, there's a couple of 
a couple of joints that we need to set up, which honestly, I, I have no idea why. This is, this is part of uh, a dynamic simulation that's always baffled me because in order for dynamic simulation to work, and the dy dynamic sim is all about motion simulation and uh, simulating movement and kinematics and all that kind of stuff. And y it'll basically not work unless you tell inventor that contact exists between two parts. If you, if, if you don't say that contact exists between two parts, then things just go to hell. Like, for example, let's define gravity. And then we'll unsuppress gravity. And we'll uh, use a vector component of... Uh, well, entity, sorry. We'll entity it there, going in that direction. And then click play. Uh, and then nothing happens. <laughs> it's like, like literally nothing happens. And the reason nothing happens is because you haven't you you haven't told inventor that the parts, even even though gravity is acting on them, it needs to be told that oh this part has spatial awareness between itself and another part. Why? <laughs> why have I got to do that? Why doesn't it? Why can't it be intelligent enough to know that this is an upright structure, and then there's a ball hovering in space, which is clearly a separated solid. And that's a solid object, and that's a solid object. Why can't it just gravity just take over and the ball just drop on the helter skelter and it just go? I, in my head, I can't see any reason for that to just play <laughs> the way it is. But no, you've got to you've got to tell it that there's that that it's a movable object. And I'm pretty sure someone in Autodesk in the dev team would be would be like, oh, because it's too computationally expensive for the program to to check whether each object has. Uh, Clashing and it can move and detect other parts. Like, oh, come on, turn it in, mate. Are you even aware? Are you even aware what year it is? It's 2020, mate. Have you seen how much power our systems have got? I've got 10 cores in my system, mate. 10900K. It's not 1995 anymore. Come on, just no. <laughs> Less of the computationally expensive nonsense. Are you seen? what NVIDIA are doing. Have you seen the kind of the computational power the PCs have got now? Don't be telling me that dropping a ball from an inch away from a Helter Skelter is too computationally expensive nonsense. Anyway, right, now is not the time. I'm just waffling. <laughs> Slash rant over. So what we've got to do is set up some, basically we've got to set up some contact joints for reasons that I don't understand. So exit the simulation player. We'll go to insert joint. And then we have to set up 3D contact joint, fucking 3D contact joint between the ball and the floor, for example, and then apply. That tells Inventor that when the ball eventually reaches the floor, there's 3D contact between them. Yeah, even though they're both solid objects, there needs to be a 3D contact joint between them to, to tell them to collide. It's just, it's mental, but that's how it is. And then the ball and the High roller, helter skelter, uh, apply that, uh, and then the ball and the, the the bucket, the inside of the bucket. Is when it lands in the bucket, it knows that it can, it's it, it's got to make contact with a bucket, even though the bucket's a bloody solid object. And then I guess the bucket and the floor as well, because or else the when you just go, the whole bucket will fall through the floor because it's, it's that needy. Uh, <laughs> everything's needy. Uh, and spatial, we've got to create a spatial joint uh, between the, what, what have we got at the moment? We've got uh, a planar joint between the floor and the high roller. So I do need to create a spatial joint between the ball and the floor. Yeah, so we'll ball and the floor. And then we'll apply that. To build this joint, the orientation of the second frame is automatically modified. I mean, what? What about what I've just done as a frame? I don't know. <laughs> frame. Ah, oh, come on, Autodesk. Right. Anyway, so that's that. That's the scene setup. I do believe, but by default, it, it doesn't recognize the materials that you've selected. Like you could make the ball lead or rubber, and it'll it, it'll not matter. Because you've got to set up how the, the the parts behave via the joint properties. So you've got to go to like say, uh, I don't know, the 3D contact joint between the ball and the high roller. Go to the properties of that, and then you've, you've got stiffness, dampening, and friction. So you've got to say, right, well, we'll increase the stiffness, uh, and then 
give it a, a little bit of friction because yeah. the frictions i think it's between zero and one or maybe zero and two and the more friction you give it then the less or the more resistance the ball will have as it's you know, going down the health skelter uh, and then dampening is obviously like vibrations and stuff so yeah it, it just it just changes how the, the materials behave when they collide with each other and then we'll click play uh Oh, it's very difficult to see what's going on in here. Uh, automatically convert color mobile groups. Well, that didn't happen, did it? I was expecting mobile groups to be colored, but they didn't happen. Never mind. Uh, the ball's there. Can I change him to a different color yet? Mobile groups ball. Can I not change clear light? Can I not make it red? There we go. That's better. It's easier to see. Right, so we'll go back into the simulation player. We'll click play. And this does take... No face on floor object, contact 3D, contact 3D with penetration impossible. I mean, that's what I'm talking about, Autodesk. Like, what in what what world does that make a lick of sense? Oh, what's its beef? What is its beef? Oh, I just literally just click play again and it goes, okay, then. <laughs> I didn't do anything different, just click play and then it goes, okay. Right, so the first time you click play on dynamic simulation, it does have to calculate a fair bit. Uh, it, it's like it's logging a trace of every single uh, coordinate of that ball as it's going down the helter skelter. So it does it does have quite a bit of compute. It's it's not computationally expensive. I don't know why it's going as slow as it is, but it is doing quite a bit as it's going down the helter skelter. Uh, but then that's gravity taking over, and Oh, it's just missed me. God damn it. God damn it. Right, so to get the, the ball to go in the cup from this point, uh, it's, I mean, it's it's pretty simple, mate. All you really need to do is just move the, just move the, the cup. <laughs> move the cup a bit. Right, we got it in the cup finally, uh, but now it's given us jip about the uh, the way it lands into the cup, which is uh, is okay. I think I need to change the, uh, the the properties of the joint between the ball and the cup, which is this one here. So if we go into properties of this joint, and we'll just change this to uh, give it a bit of friction. It needs to have some friction, or else it just it's just in, you know. If there's no friction between the ball and the cup, then how is it going to be? You know, it's, it's a bit of a strange behavior uh, when it lands in. So we'll see how this one does. We'll see how this one plays out. Come on. And there we go, mate. There we go. He's in. He's in. There we got there in the end. Uh, I did... <laughs> I did go about that the long way. What I really should have done if I wasn't being recorded and I didn't feel like I had to do this in as fast as possible is I would have charted the ball as it got to... Uh, so you can go back through the, the time stepper to a particular point, uh, uh, even by grabbing this slider here. And then... So maybe there. And then you can tell from roughly around this spot here... Um, where the x y and z position of the ball is and then you would go into the cup uh, and then you could constrain the center of the cup to these coordinates in rel you know, relative to where it is in the assembly which yeah you, you can, I mean, i'm not going to do that in this video but you can do so that's it mate that's how you get the ball to go down into the cup uh, once you've done it once uh, and you've let it solve around the full uh, five seconds if you've got it going for five seconds uh, it, it usually is quicker the next time around uh, it doesn't seem to be wanting to do that this time, but for most people who've been playing with this and have had a go at the challenge, one thing that you'll have probably figured from using dynamic simulation is that it is one of, if not the most frustrating aspects of Inventor to use. Uh, but yeah, it is it is quite frustrating to use. It's not very user-friendly, but there is a lot of information in here that you can uh, you can extract from from it. But that's Infusion Cat Challenge number five. Thank you to everyone who submitted. Uh, again, I do, I mean, I, to everyone who submitted through a hyperlink, uh, the next time, if you do have a go, if I haven't upset you too much, please do send your emails uh, with files attached uh, if you want to be included in the next one. Like I said, if I haven't upset you too much and you haven't just, just completely binned the channel, that's fine if you have. 
But thanks to everyone who did send the files through. Congratulations if you got this one correct. And don't forget, TFI has a membership scheme. The join button is right down there below the video player. Uh, Invented Tips and Tricks videos are available through the join program, uh, as well as access to the Discord server, which has a great bunch of guys and girls over on the Discord server, as well as myself chatting away, chilling out, just chatting about all kinds of bits and pieces, stuff that I'm working on, stuff that I'm thinking about, asking for people's opinions on, as well as you getting help and you know asking questions between people. Uh, also, access into the TFI weekly live stream as well every Friday. So the join button is right down there. It's $4.99 a month. And it, more than anything, it just helps support the channel. It helps this keep going. That's what it's mostly about for me. So thanks very much. And I'll see you in the next video, mate. Do